Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Matt here, and I'm making an unboxing video today, which I don't normally do, um, although I personally really enjoy watching unboxing videos, but I'm just so excited for this chassis here. This is the Grey Birch Foundations chassis. Now, if you follow the channel, you may know that I actually won this chassis at the uh, CRPS Eastern Championships back in November, so it's been almost five months since uh, I won the certificate uh, to acquire one of these chassis. It was still in development at the time and so I'm one of the first people to uh, try out one of these chassis and I'm very excited to do so. So again I thought I'd make this uh, first impressions type unboxing video for those of you who are interested in this chassis system. I've seen some sneak preview pictures on Grey Birch's uh, Instagram and whatnot and it looks really cool. So I haven't opened the box yet here. I just received it. I took off the packaging and I'm going to Go ahead and open it up to show you guys my first impressions. I have another camera rolling here just to give you some close-up shots. So let's go ahead and open it. First off, you can see here, uh, they do just sell the stock itself. It kind of comes in three pieces, which you'll see. And opening this up, okay, we do have my shipping info, so I'll be sure to not show that on camera. <laughs> I'll take that out. Um, but we have a uh, pretty well packaged in the box here as you can hopefully see with a lot of foam Quick reference guide We'll take a look at looks like we have an action screw as well as two set screws Which I think are for the rear uh, set screw anchoring point gray birch sticker I'm a big fan of stickers and a uh, quick reference guide just showing you, well, I guess you can pause and read it there if you'd like. And also a note, which again, you can pause it there to read if you would like. All right, so I just read this letter through quickly and it looks like the stock that goes with the chassis system here is supposed to be folding, but they had some development issues with the folding stock adapter. So they've shipped it off currently with a fixed stock adapter, which is actually pretty cool because I personally don't have a purpose at the moment for a folding stock. So I kind of prefer the fixed stock adapter. It's probably more rigid, but once the folding stock adapter is ready, they're gonna go ahead and ship that out to the people who purchased a foundations chassis at no cost, but they just wanted to get this out as quick as possible. So I like that. Um, you know, the manufacturing process has been delayed a little bit because of obviously the whole lockdown and, and whatnot. I'm sure it's a pain to deal with, but let's go ahead and look at the chassis now. Again, you do have a bunch of foam in here, which is nice to see. This is the stock, which just looks so cool. Overall, the the chassis system has like a very futuristic look to it. And I really like the look of this stock here. Again, this is the fixed adapter they were talking about, and it simply attaches onto the Picatinny rail. But that looks pretty neat. Just one large screw holding that adapter on. Again, they'll, they'll have a folding version of this. And you have length of pull adjustment here with a simple screw as well as your comb height adjustment with this cheek piece that goes up and down as well. And uh, I'm not sure what material this is exactly. I'm not sure if it's Kydex, but it's some sort of hard plastic. But I really like the look of that. You also have a QD point here, which is really nice, of course, for attaching your sling to quickly. This is the forend. And the forend here Looks pretty good. I'm just kind of looking over all the machining and it looks to be very well done. And it, the first thing I notice is just how insanely light it is. Obviously it is milled aluminum, so it's not steel or anything like that, but it, it, it looks to be very nicely machined. I'll give you kind of a close up look on my secondary camera here, but it looks like the machining is very well done, which is obviously a good thing. And of course we have the chassis itself here. Let's put the box away. So the chassis itself has a very unique 
style to it. There are a couple of aluminum chassis on the market for 1022s, but nothing that looks quite like this. Again, it is incredible how light that is. Very cool. All the machining on it looks very well done. I really like the anodization they chose instead of just going a straight black. It's like this nice dark or medium gray color. And the AR15 interface here looks to be a separate piece that's held onto that's held onto the chassis with this screw here. And that threaded hole is where the grip screw goes into. All right, so very cool. That is where the stock will attach to. And it looks like another Picatinny rail section here for the forend. Now, the first thing I notice is the forend is quite short. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Again, this is just my initial impressions. I'm not doing a review video quite yet. Um, I wanna get some time with the chassis first, of course, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing together and see how it looks like. So the first thing I'm looking here uh, is how rigid the connection is between the chassis and the forend. And it feels to be very rigid. I don't feel any flex whatsoever. And I really like that because my hopes is uh, that they'll come up with longer forends for this chassis system. Because as it is right now, I think it'd be great for like a, a little lightweight backpack gun or you know just hiking out, doing fun plinking and whatnot. But if you wanna use this for precision type shooting like NRL 22, or CRPS, you definitely want a little bit of a longer forend. And with such a rigid connection here, I think it will be very possible that they'll come out with longer forends, which I personally would be very interested in, just the type of rimfire shooting that I do. But again, I, I like the shorter forend for a backpack gun again, or something more adventure style, which is definitely what Grey Birch Solutions is going for with their product line in general, is like lightweight, cool accessories for the 1022. So pretty cool, I, I like that, seems to be very rigid. And I will go ahead and throw in the buttstock here. All right, so I have the entire thing assembled now and it looks really sweet. The fixed stock adapter is also very rigid. The entire thing feels like one solid piece when it's all together. So I don't have any worries about that. It'll be interesting to see how solid the folding stock adapter is because sometimes you have a little, bit, a little bit of play in those. But I do like the Picatinny rail on the back here for the buttstock because you can buy aftermarket uh, pick rail uh, buttstocks quite easily if you don't like the Grey Birch Solutions design. But I actually quite like this design. It looks very neat. I will say one thing I noticed is the anodization on the aluminum on the buttstock portion is noticeably darker than what's on the chassis and forend. Not sure if that's intentional, but there's definitely a difference in color there. It doesn't bother me too much. And uh, there's kind of like a blue anodized part here where the adjustment is for the length of pull and cheek riser, which is just kind of interesting. I'll go ahead and move these up now because I think I would want to anyway. And of course, I think it'll be this guy here. And I like this system, just one simple screw to hold and adjust the little pillars for your cheek riser and length of pull. Again, I'm obviously just trying this out. I'm not fitting it to myself at the moment. All in all, very nice attention to detail. I like these blue anodized parts here. The, the entire thing just weighs nothing. Again, I do plan to do a, a more comprehensive review of this chassis system in the future. This is just my initial impressions at the moment. But it looks like there is no 
cutie point on the front, which would have been nice to see. I do like the fact that they put one on the rear here. The butt pad is not padded. It's just a piece of plastic, it feels like. But again, this is for a rimfire rifle, not a huge deal at all. And I do like the, I believe, laser etched gray birch logo on the back there, as well as on the bottom here of the buttstock. And you do have a threaded hole on the back here for, I believe, one of these set screws to go into to help anchor down the rear portion of the 1022 receiver, which of course is one of the, I guess, downsides of the 1022 design is that it only uses a front action screw here. So uh, this, this chassis does take AR-15 grips and I'm gonna go ahead and look through my little uh, parts bin now to see if I have a grip that fits on here. If not, I'll just pull it off in AR uh, for this video anyway. All right, so I finally found a Magpul uh, AR grip in my parts bin and I, I was just looking here at the foundation chassis and it looks like it will work with a beaver tail, which is something I had a question about. So uh, I don't have many AR grips without beaver tails, which is basically just this little lip here. And if I fit it on to the chassis there, it looks like it will accept that, which is awesome. A lot of... Uh, chassis that have a AR-15 grip interface don't accept the ones with beaver tails. So that's kind of nice. Definitely helps with comfort. And let's just go ahead and install the screw here. And we'll put this cap back on. All right, there we go. We have the grip and everything put together on the chassis. It feels so cool. <laughs> This feels really neat. All right, so I have a 1022 here behind me that I will throw into the chassis. This is kind of like my race gun setup. Uh, I can't remember if this is a 12 inch barrel, maybe 11 inch, anyway, I'll call it 12 inch for now. Short 12 inch barrel I'm gonna throw into here and I'm going to keep the awesome Titan stock for more of my precision setup, which I have a plan for another 1022 in the future. But this stock I really like, especially since it gives me that long forend with an Arca rail here that I installed. I think this will work really nicely for a precision setup. But again, the Grey Birch having such a short forend at the moment anyway, and being so lightweight, uh, I think this will work better for like a short barreled uh, steel challenge type 1022. But again, if they come out with a longer forend, I think that would be huge. That would be really nice, especially since you have all this nice adjustment back here to fit it to yourself. This would be a great chassis for a lightweight precision build with a longer forend. So let's go ahead and throw this puppy in there. All right, so I finally got my 1022 into the chassis. It took me quite a while. And if you notice here, I actually switched out the trigger group. Now, I don't think this is an issue with the chassis per se. I'm gonna do a little bit more digging into it, but I've had issues fitting the Tough 22 receiver into other 1022 compatible stocks before. And I believe that's because of the size of these little, I'm not sure what you call it, but this front lip here, that dimension is pretty different than a stock 1022, a Ruger receiver, for instance. And again, I've had issues fitting the Tough 22 from Delask in other 1022 compatible stocks and chassis before. And I think the difference in tolerances between this Ruger uh, BX trigger group and the KID trigger group here being uh, all aluminum, the 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 geometry of the trigger group back here is a little bit different and I think the Ruger trigger group paired with the front lip of the Delask receiver could slip by into the Graber's chassis a little bit easier. So if any of you watching have a Delask Tough 22 receiver and KID trigger group, I'd be very interested to hear if you were able to get it into the Graber's solutions chassis with no modifications. But for now, uh, this is the only way I could get it in here. I was playing around with the Delask and Kid group 
together trying to seat it into this chassis for a good 15 20 minutes and i didn't really want to mangle anything up or have to take a file to anything so i decided to just swap it out again to this bx trigger group that i have here from ruger and it, it fell in a lot easier so i'm not sure what the deal was with that exactly it'll be interesting to hear if anyone has an experience with that themselves but for now uh, again being a race gun setup this trigger group here it kind of works out because i was saving this for a more precision oriented 1022 build that again is probably going to go in my victor titan stock but if they come out with a longer foreign for this here i would probably like to run it in the gray birch chassis here so again we'll have to see what happens with that but for now it is in here and it looks really cool i actually don't have the action screw installed yet so we're going to go ahead and do that now i was reading the instructions a little bit or i should say quick reference guide as i was struggling to seat my 1022 in here and it looks like the the set screws that come in this little package here are used together so uh, you can see with the receiver in the chassis screw one of the two supplied set screws into the chassis until it is hand tight against the trigger group and then install the second screw behind the first screw tightening it down to 15 foot pounds to kind of lock it down in place i did notice however there's already a set screw in the channel back here so i don't think they mean to have three set screws stacked together i think you use the set screw that's already in there and then one of these behind it to lock it down so i just thought i would mention that i'm not going to play around with that right now it's also quite a strange size uh, allen key that you need i believe it's a uh, 3 30 seconds but you can correct me if i'm wrong i don't actually have one that's deep enough to do that at the moment and i have quite a few tools so it might not be a very common tool that I have. Again, here in Canada, we probably have more metric sizes anyway, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put in the front action screw for now, and I'll deal with that minor issue later. They do have a shorter action screw than what is usually supplied with a 1022. And again, that's probably just because of the dimensions of the chassis here, but let's go ahead and pop that in. I'm not gonna torque it down to any specific torque setting at the moment, and there we have it. It kind of makes this rifle look like a space gun. <laughs> just the uh, just the design of it, the machining, the fact that it's just all aluminum. I think it looks really neat. The Grey Birch Solutions chassis, uh, foundations chassis. And I think it looks really cool right now with the short barrel and shorter forend. Again, I can't stress the fact enough that I'm very... Uh, uh, very hopeful that they come up with a longer forend for this chassis system but this thing is just so light in this in this chassis it is incredible and uh, let me clean off the workbench here a little bit so i can show you guys something else just put everything to the side here one other chassis that this kind of reminded me of just by the way it looks is this one right here now this is the specter ballistics chassis and i guess the only real reason why it really reminds me of the gray birch is because of the fact that they're both aluminum but this one is much more substantial in the thickness of it i can just feel here the wall thickness of the aluminum is much thicker on the specter ballistics the forend is longer it uses its own proprietary mounting system so it doesn't just have a pick rail here and it also uses an AR-15 buffer tube for your stock setup. Now, obviously there's pros and cons to everything. This is gonna be much heavier, but I think right out of the box, it gives you more options. Again, with the longer forend and the AR-15 compatible buffer tube system, you have a lot more stocks right off the bat, obviously, but honestly, the Gray Birch foundations here is really promising as well. I really like the stock setup here again obviously i haven't used it yet but just looking at it i think it's designed quite unique and very well you have this giant cutout here everything just looks like it's milled to reduce weight again the wall thickness at the magazine well area is quite thin i don't really have any concerns about durability at the moment but of course you wouldn't want to throw this down a cliff or anything this one here is much thicker in the Spectre Ballistics chassis. And it'll be really cool to kind of use them side by side. Something I noticed about the forend is the Arca rail is not cut all the way. You can see it kind of ends here. And I'm not sure I like that. I do 
like having the ability to quickly take off my, my bipod by, by just slipping it forward off the arc rail quickly on my competition rifles. But the fact that they just end it here obviously prevents it from just slipping off if it's loose, but you can easily do that with like a set screw on the bottom here or something similar to what the ACC chassis has out of the box. They just simply have a screw on the bottom and your arc rail is cut all the way. So if you want the option to have the arc rail uh, not impeded by anything, you can just take out the screw and slide things straight off the front of it, which is my preference anyway. But this one, you don't have that option. It's, it's cut in a way where this is the only portion you can use here. But it'll be interesting. Obviously you do have M-lock on the sides and bottom which will be good as well. So that was my unboxing and first impressions of this Grey Birch Foundations chassis. I know it was kind of all over the place. I didn't have anything really planned and that was my first look at it. I think it looks very promising. I do plan to maybe try like an ORPS match with it, but again, I, I'll be much more uh, open to using this for precision rifle matches like NRL 22 and CRPS if they came up with a longer foreign option. I think that would be really beneficial but for what it is at the moment this is just a great like little blaster setup race gun setup and lots of adjustability built into the stock as well which i think is really cool and such a minimalistic package here so we'll see how this runs i do plan to do a more a thorough review of this chassis system later in the future but for now i'll do my best to answer any questions you have again take care everyone i'll see you in the next video cheers